using factorising to simplify algebraic fractions. Here I've got an algebraic fraction and there is no common factor that I'm allowed to cancel. You can't cancel the x's because they are not factors of either expression. However, this expression can be factorised. Often, if you don't see a way of simplifying an algebraic fraction, especially if you see a term, an expression that can be factorised, factorising will find you a common factor that you can then cancel. So we look for factors, in fact, I think we just did this one. Yeah, we did this one. This is pretty close. We've got negative 6, so I need 1 and a 6, or 2 and a 3, and negative 1, so that will be 2 and 3, x and 2, x and 3, and because it's a negative, the larger number will be negative, and that's a positive. And on the bottom I have x plus 2. And as we remember, any expression on top or bottom of a fraction can of course have brackets around it. And this is a factor of this expression because this whole expression is x plus 2 times x minus 3. In fact, what we did here was we factorized. We put these into factors. And this down here is now x plus 2 times 1. So that can cancel to a 1. That can cancel to a 1. And I am left with x minus 3. So by factorizing our expressions, we can find a common factor that we can cancel and simplify our fraction. This one here. Now I chose a multiplication. If this was a division, the first thing you would do is flip that second fraction and make this a multiplication. So you remember about multiplying and dividing fractions? If you're dividing, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. But at the moment we have this. Let us factorize. x squared minus 9. Squares and a difference. This is a difference of perfect squares. x plus 3. x minus 3. Choose some factors here. Uh, well, we've got 15. So, and we need to get to 2, so that's going to be 2 and 3. This is negative, so one of them must be negative. This middle term is negative, so... Oh, hang on a second, it's not 2 and 3. What am I thinking? It's 3 and 5. Sorry. Um... The middle one's negative, so the larger one must be negative. Sorry, my slight problem with numbers there. Times. Uh, five, that's nice. We've only got one option. It's five and one. The middle number is negative, so the larger one must be negative. And this is just a simple factorization of two outside of x minus three. And now we go looking for, on top and bottom, pairs that we can cancel. x minus 3, x plus 3, x minus 5. All I have left is x plus 1 on 2. When you look at all this that was happening up there, it actually simplifies down quite neatly. So the strategies that you want to use are of course recognizing all the different options for factorizing including just taking out a single common factor. Be careful with your cancelling. Remembering that if I was left with everything on the top cancelled there would be a 1 left because effectively these are all cancelling down to 1. 1 times 1 times 1 times x plus 1 is just x plus 1. 1 times 1 times 2 times 1 is just 2. But everything that we cancel does leave 
a factor of 1. Also remember, of course, that if you are dividing by a fraction, you would need to use the appropriate algorithm.